You're listening to Myers-Briggs Question Corner with Edith Richards. Hello, folks. Before I get into the content of today's podcast, I'm going to give a big shout out to all of our regular subscribers. Thanks so much for tuning in every week to Myers-Briggs Question Corner and for sharing it with people you know. We want to continue to remain advertisement free, and we can only do that with your help. So if you like this episode or any of our previous episodes, please give us a share on social media, a retweet on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and I'm very active on LinkedIn and share content regularly. So please feel free to reach out to me there as well. Now, today's podcast is thanks to one of our listeners who asked for an episode dedicated to ESTP and ISFJ relationships. So this isn't one we've cited previously, so now's an excellent time, and I'll get right into it. On the surface, these two Myers-Briggs types are going to seem very different. ESTPs may have a bad boy or a bad girl image. They may engage in and enjoy risky behavior, extreme sports, and maybe adrenaline junkies. They're spontaneous, adaptable, and friendly people, very much living in the moment of the sensory world, experiencing all it has to offer. ISFJs, on the other hand, may seem like complete opposites. ISFJs may present as super organized to the point of being uptight, but also warm, kind human beings who naturally want to do their best for their loved ones. They're extremely loyal and will go out of their way to go above and beyond whatever is asked of them. Now, some personality type theorists will cite this type pairing as highly compatible. I personally think that any two Myers-Briggs types can be compatible and have a successful relationship. After all, there's so much more that goes into what makes us as people tick and what we find attractive in a romantic partner or a friend for that matter. The fact is that the Myers-Briggs doesn't measure all the intricacies that go into relationships, and we can't base a relationship's success or lack thereof on any assessment. That doesn't stop people from trying, though. In all seriousness, here's where the Myers-Briggs can be helpful. It can help you more clearly identify your own personal strengths and weaknesses, including what you might find stressful when you interact with other people. Myers-Briggs may also be helpful in understanding your own and your partner's motivators and needs, but again, it won't predict relationship satisfaction. I'll do my best to bring some understanding to this ESTP-ISFJ couple from a tight perspective. I'll start with some of the joys this couple might experience, get into some frustrating areas, and then provide recommendations for each. Let's start with the easy stuff. Both are sensing types, so both will prefer to use simple, straightforward, literal language. Both are going to have excellent observation skills. I'm going to guess that both of these types will express their love through actions and not words. And that's where the similarities end. But that's not such a bad thing. People who are in a relationship with their opposite have a tremendous opportunity for growth and chemistry because let's face it, opposites do often attract. ISFJs will likely appreciate the ESTP's fun-loving nature and spontaneity. ESTPs will appreciate the ISFJ's generosity and responsibility. There may be a huge spark between these two types, and they have the potential to really balance each other out. For example, the ISFJ can help ground the ESTP, keeping them from indulging in too much risky behavior and helping them think things through before acting. They'll also be able to help them bring some structure to their lives. The ESTP can help the ISFJ lighten up and relax more and give them experiences they'd never have otherwise. Furthermore, the ISFJ may be attracted to that recklessness of the ESTP because they want or need someone to care for and take care of on some level. ISFJs tend to be worriers, and ESTPs are carefree and tend to be very self-confident. This can also be an attractive quality to ISFJs, as long as the ESTP is careful not to become arrogant and let their egos get out of control. 
Now, here's one area that could be problematic, maturity. ISFJs are very relationship-centric people, and they may want to settle down early. ISFJs take their relationships very seriously. Less mature or younger ESTPs may resist settling down. ESTPs, and I'm talking about the type here as a whole, as there are certainly individual exceptions, but they aren't the types most likely to form long-term commitments. They are, however, incredibly charming people, especially at the beginning of a relationship. As time goes on, they may get bored and they may just pop up and leave one day. Now, as ESTPs grow and mature, their tertiary function of extroverted feeling comes more into play. And with this will come more of a concern for the needs of others, especially in a service-oriented way. This will be an important shared value with their ISFJ partners, as ISFJ's auxiliary function is extroverted feeling. My own thought with regards to this area of maturity is that ESTPs should work on developing their extroverted feeling to maximize the potential of this relationship. This doesn't necessarily mean joining a group or volunteering necessarily. One way to develop extroverted feeling is to work on expressing yourself. That could be through some type of creative endeavor, but also talking to and confiding in your ISFJ partner. Another potentially problematic area is the use of recreational time. ESTPs are doers, and they're going to want to travel and try all sorts of crazy things. ISFJs need to be open to the adventurous nature of their ESTP partners. ISFJs don't naturally branch out. They'd much prefer to remain in their comfort zones and stick to their routines. They can become anxious if forced out into the bigger world too much or too soon. But being too rigid isn't always a good thing. Laughing, taking an unplanned vacation, meeting new people, these are all things that can help to relieve stress. And ISFJs are one of the Myers-Briggs types most prone to stress. On a positive note, ISFJs will naturally want to please their partners, and they do see the need to experience new things and new people, especially if they know how important it is for their ESTP partners. A third potentially problematic area is communication. ISFJs don't like conflict, and ESTPs may inadvertently avoid conflict simply because they're not aware of it. Similarly, ISFJs are apt to do things simply to please their partners, neglecting their own needs. And ESTPs are so caught up in whatever it is they're experiencing, they're oblivious or inattentive to their ISFJ partner's needs. So let's talk about some strategies to mitigate these potentially difficult areas of this relationship. First, it's critical that both at the beginning of the relationship express their expectations as much as possible. If one is looking for a long-term commitment and the other isn't, that's very problematic and someone's going to get hurt. It's very important to slow down, communicate clearly, and understand your partner's perspective. Any couple needs good communication, mutual appreciation, and patience and trust to function well as a team. For ESTPs, here are some things you can do to better relate to your ISFJ partner. First, above all, be patient. ISFJs are slow and deliberate. They don't like to be rushed into anything. It will take them considerable time to warm up to you, especially in a new relationship. If you're at the point in your life where you're ready for a committed relationship, it's worth it to be patient with your ISFJ partner. They'll reward you a thousand times over with their loyalty and generosity. But one slip up in loyalty will be the end of your relationship, so be warned. Second, it would do you well, my ESTP friends, to have an outlet for your extroverted activities. Your ISFJ isn't going to want to join you all the time, so it's important for you to have friends or groups you can participate in your sports or activities with. Third, watch your mess. ISFJs are neat freaks. They want things to be organized and look nice, and they're not going to function well in the midst of chaos. 
It may not seem like a big deal for you not to put things in their proper place, but it's a huge deal for your ISFJ. So take just a few minutes each day to organize, as this will be seen by your ISFJ as honoring them. When they feel appreciated and accepted, they'll be much more attentive to your needs. Now, ISFJs, there are also some things that you can do to better relate to your ESTP partner. First, Try to relax and calm down. You may believe that your ESTP partner is out of control and is creating chaos in your life, but remember, that's just his or her style. The fact is that some details really aren't as important as you think. The world isn't going to end if a pair of underwear isn't in the hamper or a painting on the wall is crooked. Second, You may be frustrated by your partner, but your partner's nature will force you to grow and learn new things that you wouldn't otherwise. If you're able to calm down, you'll be able to enjoy all the activities your partner takes on, and your life will be much more balanced as a result. Third, work on giving up control. Your ESTP isn't going to be his or her best self if they're forced into your mold of the world. They have their own gifts but they are on your side. So give them a break every now and then and trust that they will come home safe and sound. And that's about all folks. Wrapping up, the ESTP ISFJ pairing is one that has great potential for a high intensity but meaningful connection if both people are ready for a commitment and honest in their communications. They each have a lot to offer the other. ESTPs will expand the horizons of the ISFJ, while the ISFJ will help ground the ESTP. As with any two Myers-Briggs types, understanding yourself, being in a good place for a relationship, and being open to your partner's viewpoint and style is key to making it work. Thanks to the listener who asked this question, and many thanks to you all for tuning in. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you'd like to hear more, or you'd like to submit a question yourself, then you can find us at www.atopcareer.com. Until next time, MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.